Good morning, everybody, and happy Friday. Hard to believe, but this is your last Friday of the school year. Um, so this will be our last Friday story. Uh, and today we're going to read Thidwick, The Big-Hearted Moose by Dr. Seuss. And I haven't seen any moose on my, uh, my morning runs around home. Usually I do, but I haven't lately. There we go. Up at Lake Winnebago, the farthest northern shore, lives a huge herd of moose, about 60 or more. And they all go around in a big happy bunch looking for a nice tender moose moss to munch. Now, you know, Dr. Seuss books always have all sorts of fun, silly words, so you can kind of laugh and enjoy those as we read today. Up at Lake Winnebango, one day they were lunching, just strolling along and enjoying their munching. For the moose moss that day was especially fine, when it happened that Thidwick, the last moose in line, saw a bingle bug sitting. The bug called out, hey, it's such a long road and it's such a hot day, would you mind if I rode on your horns for a way? Of course not, smiled Thidwick, the big-hearted moose. I'm happy my antlers can be of some use. There's room there to spare, and I'm happy to share. Be my guest, and I hope that you're comfortable there. So the bingle bug picked out a nice easy seat, and the moose went on looking for moose moss to eat. Well, an hour or so later, the bug heard a squeak, and he heard the small voice of a tree spider speak. I say, said the spider, you've got a fine, pl fine place. That moose seems quite friendly, has such a nice face. If I got on too, do you think you would mind? Hop aboard, laughed the bug, and I think that you'll find that the moose won't object. He's the big hearted kind. I accept, said the spider with joy and delight, and he started a web on the horn to the right. While the spider was spinning, he heard a gay song, and a fresh little zinna zoo bird came along. He stopped and he stared and he chirped, well, well, well. What a smart place to build. What a great place to dwell. I've been living on trees ever since I was born, but here's something new. Why not live on a horn? If there's room for two, then there's room for three. There's plenty of room, left the bug, and it's free. Thidwick stopped walking. What was all that talking? These guests had caught Thidwick the moose unawares. Hey, he called out. What goes on up there? What goes on on there upstairs? Just building a nest, sir, the Zinazu said, and began yanking hairs out of poor Thidwick's head. And he plucked out exactly 204. Don't worry, he laughed. You can always grow more. Then he dozed off to sleep in his fine moose hair nest. This bird, murmured Thidwick, is a sort of a pest. But I'm a good sport, so I'll just let him rest. For a host, above all, must be nice to his guest. Beside now, it's getting quite late in the day, and surely tomorrow they'll all go away. But alas, the next morning, the sun's early light brought to Thidwick's sad eyes a most unwelcome sight. Meet my wife, said the bird. I was married last night. And perhaps, by the way, I should mention to you that our uncle is coming to live with us, too. You're a very fine host, so I knew you'd be willing. Then the uncle, a woodpecker, started in drilling. All Thidwick's friends shouted, get rid of those pests. I would, but I can't, sobbed, sobbed poor Thidwick. They're my guests. Guests, indeed, his friend answered, and all of them frowned. If those are your guests, we don't want you around. You can't stay with us, because you're just not our sort. And they all turned their backs and walked off with a snort. Poor Thidwick. Now the big friendless moose walked alone and forlorn with four great big woodpecker holes in his horn. What holes, whispered Herman, a squirrel who spied him. What holes to hide nuts in? Hmm, mind if I try them? They're yours, called the woodpecker. Get them, get right inside them. This big-hearted moose runs a public hotel. Bring your nuts, bring your wife, bring your children as well. So the whole squirrel family all jumped on pell-mell. Gosh, Thidwick has a lot of people or a lot of animals riding up there. And the very next thing the poor animal knew, a bobcat said a bobcat and turtle were living there too. 
Now what was the big-hearted moose going to do? Well, what would you do if it happened to you? You wouldn't say scat because that wouldn't be right. You couldn't shout scram because that isn't polite. A host has to put up with all kinds of pests, for a host above all must be nice to his guests. So you'd try hard to smile and you'd try to look sweet and you'd go right on looking for moose moss to eat. But now it was winter and that wasn't easy, for moose moss gets scarce when the weather gets freezy. The food was soon gone on that cold northern shore of Lake Winnebango. There was just no more. And all Thidwick's friends swam away in a bunch to the south of the lake where there's moose moss to munch. He watched the herd leaving and then Thidwick knew he'd starve if he stayed here. He'd have to go too. He stepped in the water, then, oh, what a fuss. Stop, screams his guest. You can't do that to us. These horns are our home, and you've no right to take our home to the far distant side of the lake. Be fair, Thidwick begged, with a lump in his throat. We're fair, said the bug. We'll decide this by vote. All those in favor of going say aye. All those in favor of staying say nay. Aye, shouted Thidwick. But when he was done, nay, they all yelled. He lost eleven to one. We win, screamed the guests by a very large score, and poor starving Thidwick climbed back on the shore. Then do you know what those pests did? They asked in some more. They asked in a fox, who jumped in from the trees. They asked in some mice, and they asked in some fleas. They asked a big bear in, and then, if you please, came a swarm of 362 bees. Poor Thidwick sank down with a groan to his knees, and then, then came something that made his heart freeze. What could it be? Uh-oh. Bullets came zinging right past Thidwick's face. Guns were bang-banging all over the place. Get that moose, get that moose, Thidwick heard a voice call. Fire again and again and shoot straight one and all. We must get his head for the Harvard Club wall. Thidwick took to his heels with that load on his head. With 500 pounds on his horns, the moose fled. He could have run faster without all those pests, but a host, above all, must be nice to his guests. Up canyon, off cliff, over wild rocky trail, with bullets bang bouncing around him like hail. Up gully, through gulch, and down slippery sluice, with his hard-hearted guests raced the soft-hearted moose. Then finally they had him. Because of those pests, he had run out of luck. Because of those guests on his horns, he was stuck. He gasped. He felt faint, and the whole world grew fuzzy. Thidwick was finished completely. Or was he? Finished? Not Thidwick. Decidedly not. It's true, he was in a most terrible spot. But now he remembered a thing he'd forgot. A wonderful something that happens each year to the horns of all moose and the horns of all deer. Today was the day. Thidwick happened to know that old horns come off so that new ones can grow. And he called to the pests on his horns as he threw them. You wanted my horns? Now you're quite welcome to them. Keep them. They're yours. As for me, I shall take myself to the far distant side of the lake. And he swam Winnebango and fouled his old bunch and arrived just in time for a wonderful lunch at the south of the lake, where there's moose moss to munch. His old horns today are where you knew they would be. His guests are still on them, all stuffed as they should be. <laughs> have a great day and have a nice weekend. And next week, we've only got two stories. We have one Monday and one Tuesday, and then it's summertime. Have a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Or I guess I'll see you on Monday. Bye.